Amigos, welcome to the School of Motion Graphics. My name is Siem De La Vega. We have an exciting tutorial today. Today, we're gonna create a 3D room using only 2D images. And amigos, I know it's been a while since my last tutorial. I've been busy writing a book, and this book is just for you. How to get started in motion graphics and make money. So I have it on Amazon, and I have a link below so you can check it out. And let's get started with this tutorial. The first thing I wanna explain to you is where I get so amigos, this is where I get a lot of my textures, my images. It is textures.com. You can sign up and they have a whole bunch of categories and this is where I get a lot of these cool textures, cool images that I use to build my compositions inside of After Effects. So let's go to Photoshop and let's open this one. This is one that I got from CG Textures and what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut open the doors and we're gonna have the doors open inside of After Effects. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna make a guide. Let me zoom in more and put a guide and let's put a guide here. Let's make another guide and one here. And let's go all the way to the bottom. So let's go up to here. Okay, perfect. So we have our guides, and then let's select the rectangle marquee tool, and let's basically make sure that we have snapping on and snap to guides. And then we're gonna create a rectangle, and we're gonna go to edit copy, and then file new, and then hit create, and then edit paste. We can delete the background and then this one will be the left door. Now select your spot healing brush and what simply we're going to do is we're, we're going to fill in and fix the edges. So let's just quickly go in and you can use a clone tool for this as well or you can use a spot healing tool, healing brush tool. Sometimes for these little things, the spot healing brush tool does a good job and it's really it's a lot faster than the clone tool. So you're gonna do this for the left side of the door and for the right side. For this tutorial, I'm only gonna do it to go fast because there's a lot of information. I'm only gonna do it for the left side. I'll leave you guys to do the, the door on the right side. Let's keep going. Okay, perfect. So you can see that we filled in all the edges. Now, amigos, we're gonna prep this door so we can make a 3D door. So inside of After Effects, we're gonna give it depth. We're gonna make it look 3D. So what we need to do is we're gonna make, we're gonna cut out the different panels. So we're gonna cut out the top part of the door, the edges on both sides, and then the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is just very simply, simple, 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 click on the marquee tool and we're gonna make a little rectangle. We're gonna make it, you see right here, 15 pixels. We're gonna make it 15 pixels and we're gonna hit Control J, which is gonna cut it out and make a new layer. And this one, we're gonna call it top. Let's go to the bottom. And again, the rectangle tool, let's start here. And you see where it says 15 for the height. We're gonna make it 15 and let's go back to our door layer, hit Control J, and for this one, we're gonna make it bottom. So you got the bottom. Now we gotta do the edges, amigos. So let's zoom out, go to the door, and again, the marquee tool. And then for the width, we're gonna make it 15 pixels. I think I got it wrong. Let's go again, 15, perfect and hit control J and this will be the left side and one more time and then for the door 15 control J and so we can see it this will be the right side and obviously we would need a backside depending we can always use this again as a backside or you can use a clone tool or you can use a clone tool and just fill it all in and create a backside. But for now, for this tutorial, let's keep it simple. And we're gonna save this file. We're gonna save as, 
and I already saved it. It's called door left side. So you can call it door left side. Now let's go back to this image. And simply what we're going to do is now, amigos, in your case, you're going to do the same thing for the right side. Like I said, I'll leave you to do the right side, but you just simply cut it out, you know, edit, copy, and then go to file new and it's in the clipboard. You're going to hit create and then you're going to paste it, edit, paste and the exact methods of the exact steps that I use for the left, you're going to use it for the right. So let's close this out. Let's go back to this image. And again, using the rectangle marquee tool, we're going to basically create a rectangle. And what we're going to do is let's background. Let's double click it. Let's make it a layer instead of the background layer. And once again, select the marquee tool. And we're going to hit this little icon right here and we're going to create a mask and we need to invert the mask. So make sure you're clicking on the mask, not on the not on the layer image. So click on the mask and hit control I. And there we go. We have it cut out. So we put just to show you, just to illustrate, we fill it in. There you go. We have a we have a cut out. Perfect. So we're gonna save this as well. You're gonna do save as, and right here, I just saved it as a Photoshop. You save it as a Photoshop file. It's right here, saved. And let's go into After Effects. Let's go into After Effects. Okay, amigos, we're inside of After Effects. So to import our first file, let's go to Import File, and let's go to our Project Files. And this is the Photoshop file. This is the original image. So you can see this is the original image, but remember we saved it as a Photoshop file. So we want to open the Photoshop file. So hit import and this one we want to import as a footage and we can choose the layer. Remember to name your layers inside of Photoshop because that way you can easily identify them inside of After Effects. So front building and we're going to do ignore layer styles. Hit OK. And another shortcut to import files is Control I. So hit Control I. And we're going to do the left door and the right door. So it says uh, door left side. Click on it, hit import. And instead of footage, we're going to do composition. You can either do composition or composition retain layer sizes. So either one. Let's for this one, let's go to this one. And we're going to merge the layer styles into footage. And once again, control I. Let's go to the door, the right side, hit import. And let's go and choose composition, retain layer, si retain layer sizes, hit OK. OK, so let's go to the door, the left side. And there we have it. So you can see I named all of these inside of Photoshop and they come up and After Effects reads them. So that's why it's really important to name your layers inside of Photoshop, because when you import them in After Effects, you, you can easily identify which layer is which. So, what we're going to do, amigos, is we're going to make this door 3D. It's very simple. What we're going to do is pretty much we're going to align each. We're going to align the anchor point first for each layer. So make sure that you have snapping on. And let's go one by one. So the left side is basically we're going to move the anchor point. And you, to activate the anchor point tool, you're going to hit Y. And we're going to move this all the way here for the right side. Remember, you're, you hit Y on the keyboard to activate the anchor tool. You're going to move the anchor here for the top side, right here, all the way on the top. And then let's go to the bottom. We're going to do all the way down here. And then the front, we're going to leave the front. So the next step, amigos, is we're going to make all these layers. We're going to activate the 3D switch for all of these layers. So right here, let's turn it on. And one by one, we're going to place these in 3D space. So hit R for rotation. Let me see if I can. It's a little bit hard. Let me see if I can just give you some space so you can see it. And then we're going to move it in, in, in 3D space. So this one is going to be minus 90 degrees for the left side. And then the right side, hit R for rotation. And then let's move it 90 degrees for the top. R for rotation, and then this one will be on the X axis. I believe we will do it 180. No, I think 90. We'll I think it's 90. If not, we can always fix it. 
and then on the bottom hit R for rotation and then this one will be minus 90 now what we can do is let's create a new camera and we can go to custom view one and if we go to custom view one we can rotate and see our 3d doors so you can see that we have edges for our door it's perfect this is perfect and then the bottom one perfect now like I said we don't have a backside we can create a backside you can use a clone tool and erase all this front side and create a backside what can you what you can also do is make a copy of the front and we're gonna call this back right so let's go to our top view and simply let's move this all the way in the back and simply just move it back in Z space so we go to custom view one obviously it's gonna be a copy of the back it's gonna be exactly the same but that's okay it doesn't really matter we're not gonna to see too much so that's how we do this 3d door and let's go to the right side and we do exactly the same thing as the right side so remember what we need to do is let's go one by one and this one Y to get the anchor point we're gonna move this here the top the bottom hit Y and then we we'll move it all the way here and the key is to have snapping on I mean snapping really helps out and then as you can see on this one I only have one side so we're gonna do this this is gonna be the right side and we're gonna make a copy and we'll call it left side and we'll simply move it let's move it there you go and then Y there you go perfect now let's activate all these layers and we're gonna make them 3d layers so let's turn on the 3d switch and then remember one by one one by one let's go back to our active camera so one by one what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate rotate them into place so this is the left side so what we want to do is rotate on the Y so be minus 90 let's go to the right side hit R for rotation and this will be minus 90 Think minus 90 or 90 90 plus 90 and like I said I mean goes if you if you make a mistake no worries you can always fix it for the top you're gonna be on the X and we're gonna make this 90 and on the bottom R for rotation on the X we're gonna do minus 90 and like I said we're gonna make a copy of the front we call this the back. We'll move it all the way in the bottom. And if we change our camera view to the top, we can simply just move it. Remember, when you're here, you'll see it like an X. When you hover around the on the X, you see the X, the Y, and the Z. So just hover it so you see the Z. So right now you hover right on the blue line. And then once you see that, you can easily move it and it'll stick just on the Z axis, which is exactly what we want. Okay, perfect. Now let's switch to our custom view one and let's rotate. If you hit C on the keyboard, you can use the camera tools and you can rotate around. Perfect. Let's zoom out. And it looks good. It looks good. It looks good. Go to 100%. Okay, perfect. Nice. So we got the door. Now let's go back to let's go back to this one, this layer right here, our front side. And what we're gonna do is let's make a composition. Let's bring it in and make a composition. And let's adjust the size of this composition. So let's call this, we're gonna call this comp our final graphics 
And right now, it's the size of the image, but we, we want to change that. So hit Control K. And right here, let's change it. Let's change it to, in this case, let's do this one. Not this one, amigos. Let's change it. There you go. We can do it to 1280 by 720, and we'll change it to 23.976, and we can make it 10 seconds long. So this depends on where you are. If you're in Europe, you might use PAL. You might use 25. If you're in uh, North America, in the Americas, you might use um, NTSC. So you might do 23.976 or 29.97. You might want to do it in HD, 1920 by 1080. But for this example, we'll leave it 1280 by 720. So let's hit OK. And what we're going to do, amigos, is let's bring in our doors. Let's bring it in. Let's bring it in, and what we're going to do is let's place each one. So this is the right side, so let's place the door. Let's take out snapping for now, and let's zoom in, and let's place it in the right spot. Let's, let's place the left one. Okay, so it looks good. And what we can do is the anchor point, let's move the anchor point all the way to this edge because the hinge of the door is going to be right here on this side. And on the left side, the hinge is going to be here. So we can actually go to snapping and just snap it and snap it. We let's go back. There you go. Now let's make these layers 3d. So let's turn on the 3d switch and we're in custom view one. So let's go back to active camera. Let's create a new camera for now. And we can pull out. Now, if I rotate amigos, let's go back to custom view one. If I rotate, you can see that it's flat. But remember, here we made it look 3D. Now, there's a trick in After Effects that will enable you to retain the 3D in your comp, like the 3D depth that we have. And it's this little spiky, spiky icon. It's a collapse transformation. And if we click on it, if we click on it right here. And we click on for the doors and we zoom in, you'll see, and if we rotate the camera, you'll see that it retained, let me hide this one, it retained all the 3D that we did inside our comp. So this is a really great way to simplify your workflow, to make complex 3D and then bring it into a new comp and retain those 3D properties that you did. So let's go back and now we can see if we hit R for rotation, we can swing the door open let's rotate it you can see that we have 3d now we take it off you can see that it's flat you can see it's flat but we bring it back hit our for rotation let's rotate this you see that we have these 3d doors and that's a cool way cool way to make simple stuff 3d now obviously the front side of the building doesn't have to be 3d it's just the front side and yeah so let's go let's keep going active camera and let's let's delete this one let's create a new camera for now layer new camera and let's build the rest of our uh, let's build the rest of our composition our scene so we have this and let's bring in a couple other textures that you can download that i downloaded from textures.com one is this, these are seamless patterns. And sometimes like in textures.com, you can search for, for example, if you go to concrete, you can search for, let's go to bear. And you can search for show seamless textures only. And I do that a lot of times because I know I'm going to basically tile that texture over and over to create a big wall or big floor. So you can do that a lot of times. So let's select these three textures. Let's import them in. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring this floor. And this one we're going to call it outside floor. We're going to make it 3D and hit R for rotation. And we're going to switch the X rotation to minus 90. And let's switch our view to the front view. 
and the way that I'm toggling, you see this little icon, it's a C. If you just keep on clicking the C button, you can toggle through all these, all these different camera tools. So let's put in the floor right about here and let's change the color to purple so you can see it. We're gonna align it to the floor right there, perfect. Let's go back to our active camera. Let's go back to the top view actually and we can actually scale this down a little bit. Let's say 50. We can move it backwards here. Active camera. And then to tile it, amigos, let's go to Effect, Stylize, Motion Tile. And we're going to change the output width to, let's say, 300. We might do a little bit more, 400. And then let's say the output height to 200. And what we might do a little bit more. 500, perfect. Let's go back to top view. And if we zoom out, we see we tile this and it's a perfect tiling. We can move it just to the edge, perfect. Now for the brick wall, we're gonna do the same method. The only thing is, in this case, we're gonna delete this brick wall that we have here. And, but we already started, but here's an e easy method to leave all the work that you've done and not to destroy all of your work. So let's pre-comp this. Let's go to layer pre-comp and you have two options, move all attributes into to the new comp or say leave all attributes. We're going to choose the very first option. We're going to choose to leave all the attri attributes, hit OK, and simply let's double click and let's go to this comp and using the pen tool. Let's just cut out pretty much. This is something that you could have done inside of inside of Photoshop. We could have cut it out, but that's okay. We're going to do it inside here. And I suggest you take your time. You do a better trace of this. And I'm doing it pretty fast just to show you. But yeah, take your time on this. This is something that you might want to take your time. Make sure that you cut it out pretty well. Right now, I'm just going really fast, moving fast to show you. Let's see this. Keep going, keep going. Almost done. Okay. Let's keep going. Perfect. So we have it cut out and hit MM and oops, sorry, let's go back, hit MM and let's feather it a little bit. Let's feather like maybe two or three pixels and maybe we can, the expansion, we can expand it out a little bit. So we have it cut out right here. So let's go back to our final graphic and let's go back to project and let's go to the brick wall. Let's bring it in. Let's call this brick wall. And what we can do is make it a 3D layer, turn on the 3D switch, go to effect motion tile. And once again, let's change the output width and the output height. Perfect. Might be a little bit too much. Maybe. Might make it 200. And what we can do is, once again, we can pre-comp this. And let's call this leave all attributes. And what we're going to do, Amigo, is make a hole in here. Select the mask tool. And let's cut it out. And let's say subtract. Actually, it is not working. It is doing something... Okay, let's go back. Let's delete this mask. What we're going to do is let's go back, let's undo. Okay. What we're going to do is, okay, this is what we're going to do, amigos. Let's, before we make it a 3D layer, let's pre comp it. So let's say pre compose, and we're going to say move all attributes, the second option. We can call this pre-comp. 
And now, so we, we click on it, we have this big, we have this uh, big texture. And basically what we're gonna do is make it a 3D layer, 3D switch, and we can scale it up. We can move it, move it up. It's perfect. Uh, we can scale it down. What we can do is, the, if the bricks are too big, If the bricks are too big, what we can do is go back to our comp and we can make it 1920 by 1080. And we can move this down. Let's change the alpha height. So you, you're getting to see, amigos, that doing these requires some time. It's not always, it's not always like one, two, three. Sometimes you have to go back and experiment a little bit can change the, the height down. Perfect. That happens to me a lot of times in After Effects. You're just trying to figure it out, trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work. Perfect. So that's a better size. But now, since we pre-comp it and we're just reading a pre-comp, we can quickly go and using the mask tool, just let's cut it out now. And what we're going to do is we're going to do subtract. And there we, there we have it. We have the hole. Perfect. It's a little bit bright, so we can go back and go to Effect, Hue, and Saturation, and just bring down the saturation a little bit. Perfect. Now let's continue, and let's build inside, right here, inside. So on the inside, we have this texture. Once again, let's make a copy of this floor, and let's call this Inside Floor. move it down here and simply we're going to swap it so holding on to alt we're going to swap it it's sitting on top it's sitting right below our floor outside so what we need to do is go to the top view and simply what we need to do is move this move this all the way here Perfect. And if we go to the effects, we might want to say mirror edges. And maybe you want to make the height, maybe 300, make it a little bit longer. Perfect. Let's see. Perfect. And the brick wall, let's make another copy. And then this brick wall, let's say inside, inside brick wall pre-comp. And let's move it down here. Anything that's inside, let's make it the color orange. And anything that's outside, let's make it the color blue. That way we can distinguish what's outside and what's inside. And then this wall, let's delete the mask. And let's just move it. Let's move this all the way out here in Z depth. So we go to our custom view camera. And we pull out. So you can see what we're building. So we're basically building, basically building the wall in the back, and we put the the floor here. That's what we're actually building right now. Perfect. And let's go to our project, and let's bring some of our elements. So I have a desk, a lamp, and some plants that we're gonna use in a chair. So I already went through the process of in Photoshop of cutting them out. I'm not gonna go and show you how to cut them out in Photoshop so we can save some time. But let's import all these elements, the cactus plant, let's import it. And this one we want footage, just choose layer plant. Let's go back to the chair, hit import, and we're gonna do choose layer chair. And let's go to the desk. We've got the lamp here. Choose layer, lamp, and one more, the desk. Where is the desk? Desk. Right here, desk. Now what we're gonna do is let's bring in the desk. Let's put it right here. And any of these elements, let's make it green. So let's the desk is in here, but let's make it a 3D layer. 
And if we move, we rotate, we can see it's right there. So what we need to do is move this all the way here. Let's go to our front view. And in this case, let's hide the front side of the wall so we can see what's going on. Let's zoom out. And you can see that what we need to do is, first of all, the, to help us out, that desk, the anchor point, hit Y, and let's move the anchor point all the way to the bottom right here. Take out snapping. Let's move it. Let's move it here. Perfect. And what we're going to do is let's move this to the floor. So remember, the floor is right here at this level. And then we want the desk to be here. Now you can see that the perspective is not the right perspective, really. I mean, it should be flat, but it's okay. I mean, it, it would be better if it was more of a flat, but it's not that bad. Hit S for scale. We're going to scale this down to at least 50 to give it maybe a little bit more. Maybe give it the right size compare, in compared to the wall and to the front side of the building. So the trick here, amigos, is to populate the inside of the room with all these objects. These are, these are all 2D objects, and we're going to put them in there. So the trick is, what I like to do is, once I have the first one, the main one, I just make copies. So let's make another copy. And simply, like all I'm going to do is just swap it. So holding on to Alt, we're going to just swap it, and then just move it, and just reposition it wherever you want. So like the chair is right here. Let's go back again to the desk. Let's make a copy. Let's swap it with the lamp, for example. And then this one, I can just move it back in Z space and then move it on the X. You know, we can push it back. Um, let's go back to the desk again, make a copy, and let's swap it with the cactus. And we can push it back. So that's what I like to do is that's the easiest way. Once you have your first main object set up, make copies and then swap it with your other elements. That way you don't have to... You're already there, you're already positioning it, and it's just a matter of modifying it slightly. So if we rotate, you can see here it is. Go back to our active camera. We can bring back all these elements. So we're almost done, amigos. All we need to do now is to set up our lights and our camera move, and we'll be done. Really cool. So let's give it a little bit of animation, and let's say at... Let's say at 12 frames, we're going to open these doors. So let's go back to the doors, hit R for rotation, and let's put a keyframe, and let's make it zero. And it's going to open these doors. So you're going to open it, and this one you're going to open it like that. Now, I'm going to delete this camera again, and I apologize for deleting it and creating new cameras. Let's bring a new camera. Let's make it 35 millimeter, and let's make a new null object, and let's call this move camera, and let's make this yellow. Actually, let's make it red. Then this move camera, let's activate the 3D switch, and we're going to parent the camera to the null object. So we're not moving, we're gonna move the camera through the null object. It's just a lot easier way to move through. And what we're gonna do is, amigos, we're gonna basically, as once the door opens, let's put a keyframe here. Let's say this, we're gonna position this right here. This is our starting point. And then as it opens, we're gonna move in and we're gonna move in inside. We can go here and then see how easy it is to move the camera. So simple, I mean, it was very easy using the null object. And that's one reason I use null objects to move the camera when we're in 3D space, because it's so much easier and you can get better results. And we can do always right click and say keyframe assistant, easy ease in. And from here we can do right click keyframe assistant, easy ease out, which is control shift F9. Perfect. Nice. Okay. And then the last thing is we're going to set up some lights. And to set up lights, pretty simple. 
let's go to layer new light and the first one we're going to create a spotlight the intensity 100 and we want it to cast shadows hit OK and let's switch to two views horizontal and in this one let's switch it to the left side and let's grab our spotlight and then let's move it and let's set it up and let's move it here so we can see right here how it looks it's looking really nice a little bit moody which is kind of cool but we can also create a new light and we can call it ambient let's create an ambient light and the intensity for the ambient usually when I use ambient lights I don't go over 30 for intensity it just gives you the ambient is more like a global light so most of the times I'll go anywhere between 10 and 30 for the intensity in this case let's do 25 so it just overall brightens up your image a little bit so it looks it's looking pretty good what I want to do is I want to cast shadows though so I want these doors to cast shadows now if we hit if remember these we did the collapse transformation so they won't have the shadow property in order to get the shadow properties for the doors we need to go inside the pre-comp so let's go inside and each individual layers we can set on the property to cast the shadows so let's hit AA and where it says cast shadows let's turn it on perfect and let's go to the left side of the door let's select all of them and let's hit AA cast shadows on perfect so let's go back to our final graphic and you can see right here that it's starting to cast a shadow it's casting a shadow you can see it's casting a shadow here and the shadow is a little bit hard edge and we can fix that go back to your spotlight hit AA and we can soften up with a shadow diffusion let's say we, we make it 30 we diffuse it a little bit more and we can bring down the intensity a little bit let's say 75 so it's not as harsh maybe we can go back to 85 perfect so we got that and then maybe we want to do a spotlight inside so what we can do is go back and let's create a new light and let's call it a spotlight it's gonna be spotlight number two and then the intensity we can make it 100 and then let's go back to the top view actually let's go to the left and you can see this is from the left side this is the front building this is the back wall this is the desk the chair and all we're gonna do is simply move this light I'm gonna move it here move it up and we're gonna do it let's just move it here like it's pointing on top of these okay and then let's switch to our active camera going to do is amigos let's go back to our move camera and it's going to start moving here and then once it gets here what we're going to do is let's turn this off for now the spotlight inside and these lights let's animate the intensity and this is what I do a lot with lights as I'm moving the camera sometimes I want to dial down the intensity and go to our light option the intensity and what we're going to do is we're going to set keyframes for the intensity and set another keyframe here and basically we're going to dial this down maybe this one's down to zero and we'll keep maybe the ambient light I'll go down to zero too this is something you might have to experiment so it's completely dark so as you go goes in we're basically turning off the lights and what we're going to do is for the second spotlight we're going to go to your light options we'll do the same thing for keyframes but instead of going we're going to do the opposite. We're going to turn it on. So right now it's on. And then you see we might want to leave the ambient light on. So we might go back. And this one, let's see, the intensity was 25. Let's take it out. And let's just leave it on. And then basically we want to cast shadows and what we need to do is go back to our elements cast shadows we're going to turn it on and go back to spotlight 2 hit AA 
and the shadow diffusion. Let's bring it up and the shadow darkness, we can dial it down. And we can tweak a little bit. Let's go back to the left. We can move this back a little bit. Active camera. There you go. You have like a nice spotlight on, on all this. So that's pretty much amigos. It's been a apologize. It's a long tutorial. A lot of things that you learn. You learn how to use make 3D like a virtual 3D environment inside of After Effects. You learn how to use a collapse transformation for the doors to retain the 3D in a new comp. We use lights. We use camera moves. And as you saw in the example, you you can pre comp the desk and you can add a video on the monitor. You can add text on the wall like I did. These are pretty simple things. Um, these are basically the same steps that I showed you how you place these elements. You can do the same thing. So this is the final, the final comp. There you go. Amigos, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to join the School of Motion Graphics. I'll have all these project files available for you. And don't forget to check out the book. I have the link to Amazon right there in the description below. And amigos, always stay creative. Let it flow like agua from Managua. We'll see you on the next tutorial.